Hello and welcome once again to the uh, Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters, G3OJV. I recently uh, did a series of um, videos about small gardens and uh, HF uh, wire antennas. And I did promise that I would then move on at some future time to cover vertical antennas because vertical antennas are obviously quite attractive for small gardens. I had hoped to be out in the garden, but unfortunately, currently February 2020, we've been hit by a couple of uh, storms, very windy weather, and certainly unsuitable for shooting videos outside. And I'm actually here in Hertfordshire at the moment, not in my, um, uh, not in my home and not in Portsmouth. Um, so apologies, but I thought I'd take the opportunity perhaps of starting the series by comparing the advantages and disadvantages between a vertical antenna and a, a horizontal wire antenna. So that's where I'm going to start this, uh, this new series. So the vertical antenna, which has a lot of attractions of course, takes up virtually no space. Although it does need radials, a vertical antenna does need radials because it has to work against ground. Now, you could put a copper rod into the uh, ground and that would, uh, that would work. And I have used it myself, but it's not the best uh, method. You need some ground radials. We'll come on to that uh, in a later video in terms of uh, radials and, and so forth. One of the disadvantages of a vertical antenna is of course that it is mounted at ground level or normally mounted at ground level. Uh, I think uh, in a small garden it's impractical to do anything other than mounted at ground level. Uh, that does mean of course that the signal has to fire through adjacent buildings, houses, trees, shrubbery, whatever. So that does put it at a slight disadvantage because the ideal place for a vertical antenna is out in the open. But we are dealing with a small garden here and it's not such a great disadvantage as perhaps uh, you might think. Um, as regards verticals, I, I, I would favour self-supporting verticals because if you've got a small garden, the last thing you want really are guys to um, keep the uh, thing vertical. I mean, you know, it's your choice, it's possible. But generally speaking, in a small garden, uh, you've got lack of space anyway, and uh, in a domestic uh, environment, probably guys supporting a vertical are not, <laughs> not the friendliest uh, thing to have in the garden. So let's perhaps run through the bands and compare the advantages and disadvantages between having a vertical and uh, having a predominantly horizontal wire. Now I hasten to add, this is based more on my own experience than theory, because very often theory is not quite, um, uh, just doesn't quite bring you in the real world. I think the real world is what you've experienced and what you know to work, and the pluses and minuses of vertical compared with a horizontal uh, wire. So let's um, start with 10 meters and 12 meters, the highest uh, HF bands really. I've left out six metres because six metres is really not a problem in a small garden. You can usually put up some sort of uh, antenna and uh, one of the um, fibreglass verticals uh, is, uh, is a good, uh, good starting point. If we accept that the, the target height of a horizontal antenna should be about halfway above the ground, then it's very easy to erect a 10 metre or 12 metre horizontal antenna, dipole, doublet. A vertical uh, is likewise very easy to erect because it's only it's only around about two and a half or three meters high. So no problem there. And in many respects, there is no advantage or disadvantage with either antenna on 12 and uh, 10 meters. Uh, I don't think there's too much difference. I've never found um, one to be more advantageous than the other. The only thing I would say, of course, is that, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, uh, that the vertical antennas are omnidirectional, whereas horizontal wire antennas generally are directional. So that is a plus point, I suppose, for the vertical. 
Now, if we move up to 15 metres, very much the same situation, actually, because a 15 metre horizontal wire is, is not terribly long, and a 15 metre quarter wave vertical is likewise not terribly long, both very easy to erect. And I should, I should mention also that uh, when I'm talking about verticals, I'm talking about quarter wave verticals because the, there are the easiest antennas to erect and the easiest antennas to feed. Now, when we come to 20 metres, we start to find a problem with a horizontal wire antenna because if we aim for a half wave above ground level, we're talking about 10 metres and that is quite high. Um, for a lot of small gardens. It will work at lower levels, but as you lower a horizontal wire, so the angle of radiation rises, and so it tends to favour short skip uh, rather than longer skip signals. But of course it's very easy to erect a 20 metre vertical antenna, because that's only um, a court wave. And a quarter wave is, what, five metres high. So a five metre quarter wave vertical uh, tends to be somewhat easier to erect than a horizontal wire at 10 metres high. So plus point there, perhaps vertical. Now, as regards results, um, very similar really. I think you start to benefit from the vertical. Um, the, you start to benefit from the lower angle of radiation, it probably favours DX uh, a, a, a bit more. But uh, the horizontal wire at, at um, 10 metres above ground will work extremely well. Of course, it is, it is directional. So there we are, that's, that's, that's 20 metres. There's, you know, one or the other um, uh, will, will work quite well. The 30 metre band is very similar to the uh, 40 meter band. So I'm not gonna cover that in any great detail. I'm gonna go straight on to uh, the 40 meter band because those two bands are, are very similar. Now, when we come to uh, 40 meters, things start to change somewhat because a 40 meter uh, vertical is going to be 10 metres tall and 10 metres uh, is a significant height and it might need guy in. If you use fiberglass um, telescopic uh, pole such as the spider pole then it will be self-supporting and you can run a wire up there um, and get uh, some, uh, some really good performance on 40 metres. You will be hard pressed to get a 40 metre wire uh, at 20 metre height in a small garden. So I think we can sort of say that's a non-starter. But the reason I say things get interesting is because 40 metres is a combination of short skip and long skip. Very often during the daytime hours, and but not always, but very often during the daytime hours there is short skip signals over two, three, four, five hundred miles. And a horizontal wire at, uh, say, a quarter wave above ground level um, will work quite well. And even lower, even a, even a wire at, say, you know, six, six, seven metres above ground on 40 metres will work quite well. It will give you, or will, will favour, short range contacts over two, three, four hundred miles. But very often that is just the sort of distance that uh, you want to work to have a chat with guys up in Scotland or in Spain or in Italy or wherever, Germany. Um, so a low wire, I say low, relatively low wire on uh, 40 metres, say six, seven metres above ground, can work quite well. The vertical on 40 metres does tend to favour longer skip because it's a lower angle of radiation and my experience is that if you use a, a vertical on 40 metres, you start to lose signal to a short range station. So if you want to have a natter with a guy up in the north of Scotland or in Germany or so forth, yes, it's possible, but the signal strength will have dropped. On the other hand, working DX 
say, uh, at night or in the early hours or early morning, is favoured by the vertical. I will cover verticals in greater detail in, in uh, coming forthcoming videos, but you can reduce the size of the vertical for 40 metres by loading it or making it a multi-band antenna, but that's for the future. Next we come to the uh, 60 metre band and the uh, 80 metre band. Those two bands are very similar. Uh, 80 metres and 60 metres do tend to be predominantly short skip, short range contacts during the daylight hours and a significant part of uh, the evening as well. So you will expect to be chatting to a fellow hams a distance of 150 miles, 200 miles, 500 miles, that sort of range. And in that respect, a low horizontal wire is excellent. Again, six, seven metres high works well, and you'll have no trouble at all in making contact with the stations uh, um, in the range that I, I mentioned. Verticals really do not work particularly well on uh, 80 metres and 60 metres for short range contacts. They predominantly are favouring um, much longer distances uh, with their low angle radiation. My experience is that if you use a vertical on 80 metres and uh, really on uh, 60 metres as well, you will find that the uh, short range contacts, the signal strengths uh, drop quite uh, considerably and uh, there's nothing too much you can do about that. That's an inherent part of the vertical. On the other hand, for longer distance contacts, um, you will find that uh, it's more favourable. But we then start to run into the problem of the fact that a, an 80 metre vertical or a 60 metre vertical antenna in a small garden is just not possible without shortening it significantly. You have to load it. And when you load a, uh, an antenna, when you load a vertical antenna, not only do you make it shorter, but you make the efficiency uh, less effective as well. There's a drop of efficiency. Um, I, he I hesitate to put a value on it, but I would say that uh, you're talking about sort of four or five dB, um, which is quite significant. Um, an 80 meter vertical um, full-size quarter wave <laughs> would, <laughs> would be um, extremely uh, tall and uh, just not practical. So um, if you're thinking of using a vertical on 80 meters or 60 meters, do bear in mind that uh, it starts to become disadvantaged in various respects. And I'm not uh, saying that you shouldn't use it because I've used uh, a, a vertical on 80 meters, not a full size one by any matter of means. It, and it does work, it does work. And if you've got nothing else, then use the vertical. But it wouldn't be my favorite antenna for 80 meters um, or indeed 60 meters. And then I suppose the final band uh, is 160 meters. An interesting band because uh, when I was first licensed, um, it was a band that had uh, lots of operation on it. It was it was the local band. Everybody was on 160 meters. There was plenty of local stations, and you could get away with all sorts of uh, antennas and make contacts. On 160 meters, there's a, quite a strong ground um, uh, element, um, so uh, you will find that a uh, vertical will work um, up to around about I don't know 20 20 miles or so you'll get quite uh, quite good um, uh, signals um, up to about 20 miles. But of course it's going to be a heavily loaded vertical antenna, um, quite short for the frequency, and uh, don't expect to work uh, any long distance stuff really uh, on 160 metres with a short vertical. Uh, I think for general purpose use, uh, you, you would need some form of horizontal wire that tends to give the best results. But the problem is, of course, that that horizontal wire needs to be fairly long and in a short garden, small garden, you are going to be disadvantaged. I, my, my, my um, 
suggestion would be that if you want to cover 160 meters, probably you're going to have to use some form of end fed wire, an inverted L with a, an antenna tuner um, to match it. Uh, a doublet, a multiband doublet, which I've covered in previous video, videos, is a very, very good antenna, particularly for the low frequency bands. Um, but I think the 160 meter band is going to be a bit of a challenge in a small garden. And whilst you'll quite happily get local contacts, the fact that on 160 meters it's not so well populated now, there may be not so many local contacts to be had. <laughs> So uh, I don't want to be negative on 160 meters because I, 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 I do like the band and I was brought up on it. But there are some practicalities um, in a nutshell. Basically, there's not so much operation on 160 meters as there used to be. You may find that the nearest station to you that operates regularly is 50 or 100 miles away, particularly if you're in some of the remoter parts of the UK. And therefore, you may find that uh, it's somewhat difficult to get an antenna that gives a, a consistent and good good signal. And I, I think the noise level on 160 meters does tend to be a bit of a problem as well. So there we are. I, I, I don't want to make this, I hope this video is not too much of a rambling video. Um, I, I intended it really as a sort of a guide as to what antennas would be best suited to you for the bands of operation uh, in terms of a small garden. Uh, the vertical certainly has a lot to offer. It's predominantly going to offer you more on the higher frequencies um, and as you go lower in frequency so you will be um, you will hit the problem of the vertical being somewhat shorter, um, less efficient, uh, more narrow banded. But don't let that put you off because um, when I go on to verticals in more detail, I'm also going to cover uh, multiband verticals. And um, I've had some great, great success with multiband verticals. Anyway, that's for an upcoming video. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to press the subscribe button so you keep in touch with what, um, what we've got uh, coming up. Um, if you're looking for um, commercial... Um, uh, answers to antennas, vertical antennas, then uh, here at Portsmouth we do have a wide range of vertical antennas. Give one of our sales guys a ring and they'll be happy to uh, help you out, I'm sure. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Thanks for watching. Bye.